My name is Sheila Lamb, and I'm with the Virginia SBDC Network. For those of you that are not familiar with our organization, the Virginia Small Business Development Center is a partnership program between the U.S. Small Business Administration, George Mason University, and local host institutions throughout Virginia. With 26 locations across the Commonwealth, we provide training and technical assistance to small businesses in their local communities. Our one-on-one -on -one advising services are available at no charge. Today's webinar, Virginia Tourism Corporation Grant Programs, is presented by the Virginia SBDC Network in collaboration with the Virginia Tourism Corporation's grants team. We are recording today's presentation and it will be posted on our website, virginiasbdc.org. Due to the large number of participants, everyone's microphone is muted and the chat function is turned off. But if you have questions during the presentation, you can type those into the Q&A box and we will address them at the end of the session. We have also enabled a live transcript function, which you can show or hide via your own meeting controls. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker for today's session, Stacy Martin. Stacy is the Virginia Tourism Corporation's Grants Director and has been with VTC for nine years. She has over 20 years of experience in state government, having previously worked at Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation and the Capital Area Workforce Investments Board. Stacy is also adjunct faculty at Old Dominion University, teaching in both the English department and in parks, recreation, and tourism studies. Assisting Stacy today is Caleb Leach. Caleb is the grants coordinator for BTC. He manages final reporting structures, um, and he looks forward to helping answer some of the questions as well. Now, please join me in welcoming our speaker for today, Stacy Martin. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. We are so excited to have you here with us um, to talk about some of our programs that can support small businesses and destination um, marketing. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and explain how kind of the presentation will go today. The first part will be uh, quite a bit about tourism marketing and how it works and, and different things that you can do to enhance your marketing as a small business. Um, how to connect with the tourism industry and marketing. And then the second half of the presentation, we'll go into some of the details of our upcoming programs. Some of you may be familiar or already be recipients of these grants. What you're gonna see is back-to-back -back slides of a program that's opening and things that are staying the same. And then you'll see the same photo on the next slide with the things that are changing in that program. I set it up that way on purpose so you can kind of see this is what's staying the same, this is what's changing if you're already familiar with our programs. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. So first of all, I wanna introduce you to our destination development team. We have um, destination developers, uh, development managers all across the state and the areas that you see colored in. Many of our urban areas have very robust tourism offices. However, they're covered from our Richmond team. But you can take a look at this and see who your representative is in your area. And you can work with them if you want them to help facilitate a meeting about these grants, facilitate a partnership conversation as you start building out your grant application. They are there to help you embrace all the services VTC has to offer and also to connect you with other organizations and other businesses in the community. Now, if your business is, is in an area that's shaded in white, you can still apply for the programs. If you want an in-person meeting or a Zoom meeting related to the grants, you can contact Caleb or myself, no matter where you are across the state. If you need someone to come out to your locality in one of these white shaded areas, Caleb nor or I can arrange to do that at any time. We also have uh, Sarah Austin Holtzgrave, who is um, a destination development specialist in the Richmond area that can service some of those communities around Richmond as well. So I do wanna talk about how our grants are managed. We have five different programs. Some of them have allocation limits based on Go Virginia region. Go Virginia regions are a little bit different than our tourism regions here. Um, for some of the programs, no one Go Virginia region can get more than 20% of the total grant pool. If that region goes over 20%, we reduce everyone's award by a few hundred dollars. It's not that we take the, the lowest scoring one that qualified off, it's just everyone gets their award reduced a little bit. Usually uh, region five over here um, in Southwest Virginia region, region one um, tend to hit that 20% ceiling. So first of all, I wanna talk about why we offer these programs as a tourism authority. 
In some ways, these programs enable you as a grant recipient to act as an ad agency for us. One of the requirements of the grants is you put that Virginia is for Lovers logo on your marketing. And that allows our logo, our brand, to get into all the furthest corners of the internet based on who you're placing your advertising with. Th these are matching dollars. It leverages public and private dollars. If you're a 501c or um, if you work with a museum, maybe you're a gift shop inside of a museum, these programs are a great way to raise funds, to raise the matching funds. If you're a small business that's concerned about cash flow and coming up with cash match, you don't have to apply for the maximum award and you can request reimbursements as you go to help manage that cash flow. Um, we want you to connect with VTC's marketing opportunities. I'll go over those in a minute and really think about how your business and only tourism oriented businesses are eligible to apply for these can really activate that visitor economy, get more people coming into your store and crossing that threshold, coming to your community's destination, be it a main street, a downtown, a small town. The other thing we, we offer these programs for is to really create robust Virginia-centered content all across the globe. We really want folks, no matter where they live in the world, but especially in our surrounding states, our drive-in states, to know there's really great stuff going on in Virginia, really great shopping opportunities, really unique boutiques, really awesome things to do. We also want to focus on overnight travel in 2024 through 2027. Um, I just have to admit that Tennessee is really kicking our butt when it comes to tourism revenues, and we need to start bringing in more overnight travelers. We really need to get people to stop going to Nashville and start coming to Richmond and Roanoke and Virginia Beach and Norfolk and all the rural localities around the state. So your content helps keep visitors engaged. So for those of you that might be new uh, to tourism marketing, it's almost like a layer cake. At the very top, we have Brand USA. That is the United States Marketing Agency, if you will. They are marketing in 57 different countries, all kinds of tourism content, all different languages. They have streaming channels, and they are trying to get people to come in to the United States through a lot of our gateway airports, one of which happens to be you know, Baltimore, Washington, Reagan, and Dulles, um, which is great for our state. They come right in here, and then we need to get them to come to our regions and our localities. Then there are regional DMOs. These may be multi-state partnerships. So Virginia is a member of Capital Region USA, which is a partnership between Virginia, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. We all work together to get people into Dulles, into BWE, and then up and down that 95 corridor. And then you have a state-level DMO. That's what we are. Virginia is for lovers. We try and get people to come to Virginia. And then there's your local destination marketing organization or chamber of commerce um, events that bring people in. And then there's the, your tourism oriented business. So if you think about it like a funnel, we're bringing people into the United States. We want them to come to Virginia, to the I-95 corridor. We want them then to go down 64 and go to your small town and shop at your boutique. So your job is really to bring people into your destination or your business. Our job is to bring people into Virginia, and your region's DMO is to bring people into your county, your community, right? So really think about it that way, that you're working with your local DMO. Um, I'll, I'll go over where you can find that on our website. Talk with them, find out what the marketing, uh, what marketing they're doing, how you can piggyback on their taglines or their graphic layouts. And then take a look at what Virginia Tourism is doing in our out-of-state marketing. Think about um, how we're trying to attract people and layer in your marketing strategies with those. We all work together to get people to come here to Virginia and generate that really important revenue for our state. So some things for you to think about if you're going to apply for this grant or if you're not applying for the grant and have some marketing dollars available. We do have the Welcome Center uh, and Safety Rest Area Program. That's called PMAP. We love our abbreviations in tourism. There's links in the grant documents for you to get right to that website and see what they have to offer. You can put rat cards um, in a Welcome Center for $10 a month. 
Uh, grant funds can help pay for the printing and design and shipping of those rack cards. There's other opportunities at our welcome centers like um, branding the doormats or putting up window clings or doing video spotlights. Um, so really think about how you can activate the travelers that are stopping in those welcome centers and those safety rest areas and maybe grabbing a few brochures, talking to a travel counselor about where should I go from here? I'm retired. I'm just kind of exploring Virginia. Um, take a look at that. Take a look at our industry co-ops. So our industry co-ops are special marketing opportunities where VTC um, underwrites the cost of marketing with some of these media channels. So for instance, one of them is Blue Ridge Outdoors. We help buy down the cost. So you get a lower cost to be in that publication. Um, these do change every year. Take a look at our website and see what's on offer this year. You can add that into your marketing plan. And then Leisure 360, they print the Virginia Travel Guide. They also manage some of the digital uh, streaming ads that are on the state tourism website, as well as some other um, streaming channels that they manage. Take a look at what your partners are doing. Take a look at what your competitors are doing um, and kind of layer in with what they're doing. I One of my favorite things to do in social media is like a competitive likes. So I'm going to take a look and see what type of demographic likes my competitor. And then I'm going to try and get those people to like my pages as well. The one thing you really need to do with these grants is to have that Virginia is for lovers message in your advertising. Usually that's putting the logo in your print ad, but we also wanna hear it in radio. We wanna see it in broadcast. We wanna see it on your digital marketing as well. So th think through how you can carry that into all the marketing that you're doing. One of the great things about our programs is there's a look back period. So if you have the logo on all of your marketing going forward, you're already building up match. You're already building up match dollars to apply for the next round. Usually the look back period is anywhere from three to six months. So it's just always a good idea to put that logo on everything anyway. So let's think about why tourism, what are tourism economics and why do we do this? Well, we recognize that meals tax, sales tax and occupancy tax, payroll tax, wages in general support our localities, right? We know that entrepreneurs and locally owned businesses keep profits in the local community. We also know that tourism businesses like your breweries, your coffee shops, your breakfast and brunch places, those improve quality of life. And then larger corporations want to move to Virginia and to your community. So we kind of call ourselves the front porch of economic development. Think about how our dollars maximize yours. If you can put up $10,000, we might be able to match that with another $10,000. And all of a sudden you doubled your marketing budget. So one thing I advise you to do as a tourism oriented business is to start attending your DMO meetings in your community. Start going to your economic development authority meetings if they're open to the public. Think about the partnerships that you can create through our grant programs and through other programs in your community. So one thing I want you to think about is research. I don't want you to open up the grant application and just start typing. What I want you to do is really dig into the data that you own and the data that we own and the data we can provide to you. So we have a website, uh, vatc.org slash research. On there, you can see all kinds of travel research. Um, what kinds of things are history travelers doing? Where are they coming from? How many nights are they staying? Um, where are they visiting? You can take a look at, let's say, um, outdoor recreation visitor profile. Where are they going? What do they want to do? Um, dig into the research we have before you start writing your marketing plan. I mentioned the destination development managers earlier. They have access to a variety of reports that aren't necessarily public dashboards, but we have we track a variety of points of interest across the state. So for instance, I live here in Virginia Beach. I commute to Richmond a couple times a week, and we have the Neptune statue at the oceanfront as one of our points of interest. We can track the cell phones that pass by there and know who came to Virginia Beach. Where are they going to eat? Where are they staying? All through these tracking pixels on their cell phones. We can share that information with you. Your destination marketing office, your tourism office in your community may subscribe to other research services like Arrivalist or Star Reports. There's great information in there you can use to build out your marketing plan. And then as small business owners, 
take a look at your credit card data. You know, what reports are you getting? Where are those zip codes coming from? Take a look at your Facebook insights. What is the demographic of your typical customer? How can you get other types of customers coming to your business? You should definitely have a mailing list, email list, uh, a snail mail list going uh, for your location so you can data mine that for information. Research is required in your application. We want to see you reference these target markets and these target demographics. Where are people coming from? Why are you targeting those markets? Maybe you're getting all your visitors from Philadelphia and it's time to start targeting Cleveland. Explain why you want to do that, that 99% of your visitors are coming from Philadelphia. Cleveland is a relatively close drive market to say Winchester. We want to go ahead and start it start targeting Cleveland. So look at research and make sure you're referencing the research in your grant narrative and in your grant application. So this is an example of some of the research we can share with you. Top 15 visitor states. Um, a lot of people come in from West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maryland. Maybe you want to think about targeting those states. Um, but maybe you might say, you know what? A lot of wealthy people in Georgia, Buckhead, Atlanta area. It's only a seven hour drive to my community. I'm going to go ahead and target those folks. I want to grow that 4.3% to 5%. We want to see that kind of data and that kind of reference in your grant application. Another example that we can share with you is which cities are people coming from to Virginia? And again, you might say, hey, look, you know, not a lot of people coming from Dallas. We know there's some big conferences going around on in the city nearest to us. We're going to start targeting um, some Dallas residents. We see only 1.3% of folks are coming from there. We want to grow that to 1.5. So I'll pause for just a minute. Let me just pop into the Q&A real quick. We know open questions. Okay. And then we've got some links in the chat. Okay. So now I'm going to go into our specific funding programs. I'll talk about what we're keeping the same and then what will be changing for this year's rounds. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. So one thing to remember, top of mind on all of our programs, is we really want to see that overnight travel connection and that out-of-region traveler. Out-of-region traveler is someone who's coming in from at least 50 miles away. So what we really want to see is folks leaving their home community and going somewhere for a night or two or three or four. We know sometimes some rural areas do not have as much lodging. Um, in that case, we really want to see that day trip traveler, that out-of-region traveler come in. We also want to see out-of-state marketing. Um, the out-of-state visitors don't put heavy stress on our public infrastructure, like our schools, hopefully not our police department or fire department. And so that's kind of really good revenue for the state. Again, I talked about those regional limits um, that we can't give more than 20% of the total funds to any one region. So our marketing leverage program, this is our longest standing program. Um, it opens February 8th, closes March 14th. This requires partnerships, so you'll be, you'll have a hub and spoke model where you'll be the lure. Your business is the reason why people are coming to your community, and then you're going to need to identify some partners, almost like building an itinerary. So if you have a really cool art gallery or boutique, and there's a brewery next door, you should be partnering with the brewery, maybe the brunch spot down the street. Maybe folks are going to go for a hike at the state park next door. So really think about how you can build out um, some partnerships that are going to get people to stay in the community a lot longer. Now, the maximum award for this program is 50000 for the 2024 round. We have not had the $50,000 tier since pre-COVID, maybe 2019. Um, so we're going to go back to that. This is a cash match program. We did go to in-kind match during economic recovery, but we're well out of that. So we are back to one-to-one -one cash match on this one. And this is open to tourism offices, chambers of commerce, EDAs, PDCs, and small tourism-oriented businesses. So what's a tourism-oriented business? Sometimes that can be tough to define. I can tell you what it is not. It is not uh, a nail salon next to the Kroger but it could be a nail salon that's inside a hotel resort like Primland or the Homestead. Um, it is boutique retail, um, but it isn't 
um, like Rose's department store. So if you have questions about your eligibility, please email us in advance. We don't want you to go through the trouble of applying for everything if your business isn't qualified as a small tourism oriented business. So what's new with this program this year? So the funding tier of $20,000 will stay at a one-to-one -one cash match. And again, you do not have to go for the full award. If you're a small owner operated business, maybe you just want to go for $2,500 because $2,500 is all you're spending on marketing and that's all you have for match. That is perfectly okay. For the $50,000 tier, it's a two-to-one cash match. So you need to build out a marketing plan of $150,000 and we would reimburse you for $50,000 of that plan. With the one-to-one -one cash match at the $20,000, you would build out a marketing plan of, of $40,000 and we would reimburse you for $20,000 of that. New this year is that you need a letter of support from a regional lodging partner. Now that could be an Airbnb, that could be a Verbo, that could be a local hotel, motel, it could be a state park with cabins and camping, could be a private campground. But we really wanna see that overnight lodging um, part of your application and part of your partnership. You also need to have a letter of support from your local tourism office or destination marketing organization. If you don't have one in your region, there's a few regions that don't, getting a letter from your locality, you know, from your town manager, from your county manager would be just fine. This time, we're also going to add a few points if you exceed the minimum match. Uh, in the past, we've only scored on the quality of the match. Everyone just kind of went for the minimum high quality. This time, there's going to be some points awarded if you can exceed the match. We really want to leverage um, these partnerships even more. So our special events and festivals program is the one that's going to see the most changes. It also opens on February 8th and closes March 14. These are events that have to be established. They have to have been held at least twice since 2017 and have to be at least two days with one overnight stay. Um, we really want to focus this one on expanding the event's footprint or expanding the visitor experience. So let's say um, you are part of a partnership that manages a giant music festival, um, that your business is within this festival footprint. Um, and you, you, you probably wouldn't apply for this, but you might be involved in building out someone's application. Maybe you want to suggest they have an artisan market or a food truck rodeo um, at these events. This one is very, very specific in helping grow established events. It's in-kind match, um, but 50% of the grant has to be spent on marketing. And then no more than 50% can be spent on some very specific event production expenses like renting tents, renting tables, um, renting comfort stations, um, that kind of stuff. So this is a program that sees the most changes, but it's also a really neat program if you're a small business, if you can activate getting involved in a special event and festivals grant in your community, it's a great way to get your business in front of a lot more people. Now, this one is changing significantly in that it um, will have three tiers. Events with less than 1,000 attendees are ineligible, but they can apply for the marketing leverage program. We are going to update this to allow some agritourism businesses on working farms to have a lower attendance tier. We're still working that out. We'll have that figured out by next Wednesday. With this program, you also need a lodging partner uh, and a letter of support. You also need a letter of support from the tourism office. New this year is proof of prior attendance to that event. So if you're an agritourism business here on the call, we understand you might not use Ticketmaster. You can just upload a letter, a uh, written attestation of your prior year's attendance. And again, on this one, higher match will score higher. Oops. Oh yeah, so I did update this here. Um, this is a small change, like I mentioned before, if you are a farm owner that does agritourism, there will be a 500 attendee tier 
only for those working farms that are in economic development districts. There'll be information in the grant application on how to find out if you're in an economic development district. These are our really, really rural localities where a 500 attendee event is really a game changer. Um, so for instance, Virginia Beach is not an economic development district. A 500 attendee event is, is a normal occurrence. For us, it's a 500,000 uh, attendee event that's that makes a big difference or a 50,000 person event. So these are for very, very small rural localities. If you have a question about your eligibility as, as, a, as a farm owner that's doing agritourism, send us an email and we'll let you know if you're eligible on that one. So then on the DMO program, that is our tourism office program. And that is for um, the 130 or so tourism offices across the state. Now, as small business owners, you might get a call from your tourism office saying, hey, I need a letter of support. I need you to be a partner on this grant. Talk to your tourism office and see if they're applying for this grant and think through how you can piggyback on the marketing that they're doing. See if they'll share with you their target markets, their target demographics, see if they're looking for partners. Now this program is up to $20,000 with in-kind match for these tourism offices. And it's really a way for the community to think about targeting a new audience or rolling out some new creative to see how it works out and if it does drive tourism. So this is gonna change. Um, just a little bit, again, needing that regional lodging partner. So if you are a small lodging business, Airbnb, Verbo, uh, b and B, an inn, um, you know, you might be interested in writing a letter of support and piggybacking on their marketing program. And again, on this one, the higher match will score higher. So our newest program is um, our VA 250 program that'll open March 5 and close April 11. Um, as many of you know, America's 250th commemoration is 2026 to 2031. It's a great time to really activate that spirit of entrepreneurship, that sort of, you know, American hard scrabble, you know, mercantile tavern uh, in the sort of ethos that we we saw from the, the colonial period all the way through the frontier period. So think about how you can activate some of the commemorations that will be going on in your community. Um, it's really open-ended in terms of connecting to any period of American history and culture, indigenous cultures. Um, think about if like, if you're a restaurant owner, think about how you might be able to tweak your menu a little bit and have like a colonial special or have American Revolution special. How can you maybe change the decor in your shop or bring in uh, certain retail items that will have sort of a more patriotic theme. I'm sure the big retail show at the Atlanta Apparel Mart will have all kinds of patriotic stuff for the 24 and 25 buying year. Um, of course, the main commemoration will be July 4, 2026. But in Virginia, our history goes all the way through 2031 with the Battle of Yorktown. So we really get to maximize all of this for five years. Right now, this program is really open to the VA 250 local committees localities and museums. Now we're gonna take a look and see uh, what kind of funding is available after this legislative session and see if we might be able to open that up to maybe restaurants, maybe to B&Bs. We're taking a look and see, we do this in partnership with the VA 250 Commission, um, but it will be open two times a year through 2026. So talk to folks in your community, especially those folks in your historical societies, tourism offices, parks and rec, and find out what's gonna be happening in your community in these commemoration years so you can maximize your sales and offerings throughout this commemoration. It is our hope that this will continue through 2027 to 2031, all the way through that Yorktown commemoration. One thing to remember, again, thinking about how you wanna activate maybe some visitation or piggyback on some marketing is World Cup is in United States, Canada, and Mexico in 2026. Um, I think we have international rugby championships coming in, I think 2030, maybe 2031. So we're going to see a lot of East Coast international travel. Olympics are in LA in 2028. Of course, that's global, nationwide. So think about how maybe you want to activate some folks here on the East Coast that might be flying into DC and then going on to LA um, 
for a few weeks vacation. But it's really exciting that this commemoration is happening. So much happened in Virginia that we can activate um, this commemoration against the backdrop of small business development, entrepreneurship, sales, visitation. Oops. So this is the big one I think everyone is waiting for. This is our micro business grant. Um, I, I can't see who's on the call, but I imagine some of you may have applied for this before. This is a round that's set aside for small businesses with less than 20 full-time employees. So this is your owner operator, family operated businesses. You can apply even if you got an award in the past couple of years. This one has a smaller award tier. We see this as a gateway program. So if you've never I've been involved in one of our programs. This is a great one. Get in on the ground floor. Um, it's not as many applications in the round. Um, we award from five to ten thousand dollars. Same thing. It's matching marketing money. Um, this one has been in kind in the past. We're going to have some conversations on whether or not it's going to stay that way or go to cash match. Um, this is the one where your Main Street organizations uh, might activate the $10,000 award and need partners, or your Chambers of Commerce might need partners, but you as a small business owner might also be interested in applying for this. And this one is really focused on helping you get through off-season, right? So that sort of October, November to April, May time period um, is what this program is for. Help enhance your marketing dollars, help you do some marketing over that holiday shopping season, um, the February Valentine's Day, college and um, K through 12 spring breaks. So think about how um, you might approach sort of an off-season marketing program to get more folks to come in your business in the cooler months. Now, um, I will say that this program is changing in one small way in that it will open in June of 2024. Previously, we've opened it in September, um, but we found that we need a little bit more lead time to do the scoring and to activate our marketing and content development teams um, so they know what's going on in the fall and winter months. So mark your calendar. This one would open mid-June this year. And there'll be a date change to special events and festivals as well the 2025 event round. So events that occur January 1, 2025 to December 31, 2025 will need to apply in June of 2024. So we do have special events and festivals opening in January of the, uh, in February, February 8th of this year. That is for the 2024 calendar year events. In June, we will open another round for the 2025 calendar year events. We need six months lead time so we can really activate our festival and special event marketing. Um, so you might end up getting calls needing two different letters of support, one for the February round and one for the June round. So a few things to think about. Sometimes it can be daunting. Um, I understand as a small business owner myself that coming up with $10,000 in match can be difficult. You may only have a marketing budget of $2,000. That's okay. Like I said, you can apply for a smaller award, but there are some ways to activate match. Um, there's new legislation in Virginia that allows businesses and, and lodging partners to band together with the locality and create a tourism investment district. This is where there's an extra fee added on to a transaction. All of that, those funds go into a pool of money that is managed by a board for tourism marketing. The Richmond region is the first uh, region to stand up a tourism investment district. We call them TIDs. It might be something worth thinking about in your community, um, like Stanton downtown, Petersburg downtown. They may think about setting up a TID. It's not a tax. It's just a small fee. It can be a penny. It can be 5%. Um, depends on what you all decide as business owners and the locality, but it creates a pool of money that can act as match for these grant programs. Um, oftentimes, a lot of the tourism offices in your community do get some funding from their locality, um, all, some from membership at their chambers of commerce. Take a look at your existing marketing budget. Think about what you're already doing in terms of marketing. Add that Virginia is for Lovers logo to it, and you've already got some of your match in place. Your existing marketing budget can act as match. Talk to other businesses on your same block or other types of businesses in your community. Maybe you all want to go in together on a $10,000 grant to activate another $10,000 for a brewery trail or for a uh, art gallery trail. Think about how you can work with other businesses in your community 
and create a big pool of matching funds. And I mentioned before, our 501Cs, like our museums, they can use these grants as a way to raise matching funds as well. And so a few things I want you to remember is these are partnership programs, partnerships between you, a small business owner, and us at VTC, partnerships between you as a small business owner, the tourism office in your community, and you as a small business owner with other businesses in your community, really think about how you can create together a robust itinerary to get people to come to your community for three, four, and five days. Um, we know that Fridays are a big travel day now with telework. So how can you get people to come in on Thursday, right? Will they drive in after work on Thursday and stay Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, maybe even Sunday night? Think about how you can create a really... A robust marketing plan and tell people there's so much to do that they want to stay for five days. Use that logo on all of your marketing and ads. One thing to remember is these are reimbursement programs and we are a government agency. So you have to spend the money up front. You have to send us receipts, proof of marketing and proof of payment, and we pay you back. That can take 30 to 45 days. We have set up a new program where we can wire transfer your reimbursement, which is a lot better than waiting for checks to be cut. But recognize that these are reimbursement programs and you need to manage your cash flow. Um, I know it is tight as small business owners. So really think about only applying for what you can afford to outlay and wait for reimbursement. So eligibility varies depending on the program. As small business owners, you are eligible for the marketing leverage program. Um, and the micro business program, depending on whether or not you are an event organizer as well, you could apply for the special event and festivals program. The destination marketing organization program is open for to tourism offices, but it's a good idea to reach out to them and find out if they're applying and if they can include you in their marketing plan. Again, I, I can't stress enough about these regional limits by Go Virginia region. Um, we will not... Um, We'll just reduce everyone's award by a small percentage to get under that 20% ceiling. Um, our goal is to award as many applications as we can that are qualified. These are scored applications. They're scored by teams. Um, you need to do a really good job to get funding. Um, but we will, we will do our best to kind of spread the money across the state. That's required by legislation. And the, the other thing I want to share with you is you need to read the terms and conditions and the list of eligible expenses before retire before applying. Oftentimes we have people put things in their marketing plan that aren't eligible. I've seen everything from new roofs to painting fences. So make sure you're reading all those documents that accompany this program and that you know, um, you know what's allowed to be listed in the marketing plans in the program. So a few things to do. Um, I do teach at the university, so you have homework. Um, we want you to research those welcome center opportunities and include those in your marketing plan if they're appropriate. Take a look at our discount program, the industry advertising co-op program. Read over all the grant documents before you apply. There is a Word document that has an application template. You can draft your application in the Word document and then copy and paste it to the web portal when you're ready to apply. You don't have to apply exactly on February 8th. It's open all the way until March 14. We don't even look at a single application until March 15. Review that list of expenses so you don't end up disqualified for having an ineligible item in your program. Build out your marketing plan. Really think about who you wanna target, um, what demographics you wanna target, where you want um, folks to come in from and how long you want them to stay. There are some limits on what you can spend money on. So for instance, if you wanna stand up a Virginia is for Lovers merchandise program in your boutique, you can only spend 10% of your grant award on your initial inventory. Or let's say you're a restaurant owner um, and you're doing live music, you can only spend 10% of your, of your award on your ASCAP or BMI music licensing fees. So read over the programs to see what has that 10% limitation. And then before you even start to apply, make sure you have those letters of support um, already in place, saved on your hard drives. So you can upload them with your application. 
And so I'm going to leave this screen up for just a minute. And then we can go um, take some questions here. So we have program specific emails for each um, program. You can email us questions about eligibility um, to these emails, or you can reach out to Caleb, Noah, or myself, and we'll answer all your questions online. On our website, vatc.org slash grants, you'll find all kinds of documents um, on there, terms and conditions, the application template, FAQs, reimbursement forms, W-9s, um, everything you need to apply for the program will be hosted online. I'm gonna stop share here and see if Sheila wants to come in and go over the, the questions? Of course. Let's see. So Caleb's been um, answering quite a bit of them while you were presenting, but we still have some here, I think that would help everyone. Okay. Um, well, this one actually, so this, the first question was, how would a vintage antique aviation business fare in the Virginia 250 grants? I think that would be an excellent fit. As I said, I'm here in Virginia Beach where we have the Military Aviation Museum. Um, we work closely with them. They have done um, events like a 1940s big band dance, um, even offering up you know, opportunities for overflights um, to talk about you know, westward expansion, depending on where you're located, or, or take a look at the coastline and talk about the Battle of Yorktown. Um, really think about how you can activate aviation history, even um, how we went from the Wright brothers all the way to, you know, having rockets here in Virginia at Wallops. So I think there's an opportunity there. Now, small businesses are not yet eligible to apply for that. You would need to partner with your local committee, but it seems like a brilliant idea and a lot more exciting than history lectures. And I would love <laughs> to see an application like that come across. <laughs> Um, would sponsoring a conference be within the realm of matchable awards? As a print publication, we don't normally advertise anywhere, but we do sponsor conferences. So, um, yes, there are provisions for attending and having booths at trade shows. So you, we can't pay for your travel or your food or your accommodations. Um, but if you are, let's say you're... Um, a popcorn company and you're going to the VDAX food show, um, the grant money could be used to pay for your booth space at the food show. And you could use some of the funding for your booth um, uh, layout and design, like your big posters and banners and things like that. We would also want to see some marketing though, not just the conference. We'd want to see some marketing um, materials printed and distributed, maybe some digital marketing pushed out through social. Um, Stacey, I think you can see this next question. Mm -hmm. It's pretty detailed. I don't know if Caleb wants to address this or, or maybe copy it for the Hotel Lake Anna and or if this is something you could address briefly here. Okay. Um, yeah, let me let me see who is up in the Lake Anna area. I'm familiar with Lake Anna from being in the Park Service and you are in Spotsylvania County. I don't think we have a destination development manager there. What I'm going to do is I have your email here. I'm going to grab that real quick and save it. And we'll drop you an email to coordinate um, setting up a call with you. Certainly your hotel would be eligible for our programs as well as the restaurant. Um, so I'll reach out to you directly um, and we'll coordinate from there. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. Can you write off other factors of marketing like website creation cost or advertising cost? Um, are there limitations? So um, website design is an eligible expense in the marketing program or website enhancements are as well. So let's say um, you're a, um, trying to think, you're a small museum and you want to go to a ticketing system. You could have the website, the website design cost to add that ticketing system be added in. If you want to stand up a new website, that is also eligible, but we want to see marketing of the website included in the plan. The application cannot be just for the website creation. The other thing, our job is to drive businesses to destinations. So it can't be just like e-commerce. It needs to be driving folks to brick and mortar destination as well. Now, if there's some e-commerce parts of it, that's okay, as long as it drives people to the destination as well. Um, 
Can event organizers apply for a micro business grant or is this only for a lodging restaurant type business? So I'm um, um so let's see, like a wedding planner wouldn't necessarily be eligible, but the wedding venue would be. Um if the event itself would be eligible, so let's say you're organizing a big music concert um, in a small town, it's a three-day festival, the event would be the applicant um, in that case. Um, Karen, if you would, you want to drop me an email and kind of explain a little bit more what kind of events you organize. Um, we do have some of, say, your wedding planner. Some of our venues do use our grants to, you know, advertise on wedding wire and things like that. But you got to have a, a brick and mortar place where people are going. Our job is to bring visitors in to a town or a community. Thank you. Maybe Caleb can drop your email in the chat. Um, or an, an yeah, that'd be great, Caleb. Email. You can drop our emails in there. Great, thanks. I know they'll they'll be sent out in the follow up email that I send. But okay, here's a just just a comment. Did you say popcorn? Now you're talking my language. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so Maddie, your question about list of attendees. Are you looking to network for the attendees? If it's for this event, I I apologize, but um, all of our small businesses that we work with, we keep it um, confidential. So if that is your question, um, the answer is no. Um, let's see. Uh, Ma Maddie, what I can do is um, when I send the, the slides over to Sheila, I can send a link to the list of the tourism offices across the state. You could start there. Okay. Uh, you network and create some partnerships. I appreciate that, Stacey. Thank you. Yeah, we just, uh, like I said, we're we're confidential with our our small businesses. Um, okay, do we have any other live questions while we have Stacy's brain to pick? Thanks, Maddie. I do wanna say that we absolutely appreciate um, our partnership with SBDC and these opportunities with the micro business grant in particular to support entrepreneurs. Um, that's a brand new program we set up two years ago, and it's been very successful in getting smaller owner operators connected with tourism marketing so they can grow their businesses. Yes. Um, so this next one I see here, um, and we appreciate you too um, and working with us. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Is there anything related to travel exports, promoting the Dallas airports, et cetera, for travel abroad? So that might be through Virginia Economic Development's International uh, Division. They do have an export division. Um, so that's Virginia Economic Development Partnership. You would go through them and take a look at their international team and they can help you in terms of exports. Um, we don't promote travel abroad because we want to bring people into Virginia. Um, that makes sense. Um, are there specific business types that can qualify um or don't qualify for the grants like an LLC? No, the main criteria is having an EIN number or a social security number. Um, so we can cut the check in the 1099 against that, but no, there are not limitations on, on your business type at all. Uh, let's see, we have just opened a small boutique winery in Buckingham County. I'm thinking that the micro biz grant might be a possibility for us. Uh, first, can you tell me how I go about partnering with Virginia's for lovers to incorporate their logos and who can I speak to in more detail about this? So Caleb can put up a link to our website. You would click the essentials tab and, and then select request logos and our graphics team will send you a great big zip file. You'll probably want to request the wine lovers logo because we do have that one. And then um, drop us an email, Catherine, and we can do a phone call. I'll connect you with the destination development manager in Buckingham County. We work quite a bit with Annette Boyd over at the wine board, and we can have a one-on-one -on -one call about how we can work with you. I know some wineries do include our logo on their labels. That is something really to think about for 2026, especially if you're going to do uh, you know, a commemorative blend. Uh, for America's 250th, you might want to go ahead and think about including that logo as you get your, your labels approved through what used to be the ATF. Great. Um, so next one is we are interested in establishing a boutique Virginia is for lovers. Who should I talk to? <laughs> so establishing a Virginia is for lovers store um, really should be part of an existing boutique or a boutique you're going to stand up. I have not, I'm not yet sure that you could stand up a Virginia is for lovers 
store in and of itself. That's a trademarked logo, but you could carry it in a store with a different name. Um, we have a merchandising program and you can find information on that also on BATC.org. And um, you would click, go to essentials again and you'll see merchandising and you can set up a wholesale account and get wholesale pricing on that and sell it for whatever markup you want to do. That's a good program. Um, how difficult is the grant writing and procurement process? Do we need a specialist to do the grant paperwork? No, you don't need a specialist. We are not like a federal granting authority. We we have worked closely with small businesses. We understand the challenges and we will walk you through uh, the reimbursement process. Um, the grant is really a basic seven page application answering questions. We don't need audit information or anything like that. Um, we're, we're used to working with lodging partners and, and we can work one-on-one -on, -one on that. Um, you made a comment about funding for small businesses to attend a food expo. Can you explain that again? Sure. In March of this year, the Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services is hosting a food show at the Richmond Convention Center. So people that sell foods to restaurants and boutiques have uh, booths. And then all the buyers get into the expo for free. Um, we will have a booth there at that event um, talking about our grant programs, but it's a great program to promote um, your food and beverage uh, to buyers. It's not through us, it is through VDAX, but we will be there. And they do it every other year. Great. Um, let's see, aside from the co-op program that Caleb linked, to me earlier, is there another way for prospective applicants to find outlets for spending? I imagine the co-op opportunities are limited to a couple a year. Yeah, I think we have five or six co-op opportunities, but they are larger buys. So with like Expedia and Travelocity. Um, I'd be happy to set up an email or phone call with you, Jesse. And Caleb, Noah, and I are, you know, marketing gurus. We can help you think through some of the best publications depending on your business type. So for instance, if you're outdoor rec, you might want to do um, recreation news. Um, if you're a boutique store, maybe you want to do the country register. There's a lot of specialist publications we can connect you with, as well as um, a list of um, Instagram influencers that you might be interested in spending money with. We can talk you through some of that. We're happy to help you build out a marketing plan. Can you use equity in the business for match or does it have to be cash? It has to be cash match for the marketing leverage program. So if you sent us a, a advertising invoice for $1,000, let's say from the Washington Post, we would reimburse you for 500 of that. That's how that would work. Um, it's basically a one-to-one -one match. We reimburse you for half of what you spend. Um, and I, I think you shared this, but can you share again the dates for the food expo? Let me double check. It's in March. Okay. I couldn't remember if you gave specific dates or not. Yeah, it's such a great program. Uh, I'm looking because I know I had it set in my calendar. Oh, I think Caleb's looking it up. Oh, it's the 27th of March. Great. And you see Jessie shared her email. If you can. Grab oh, as it edible. Mm hmm and do we have any other questions? Got a few more minutes here. There are so many wonderful grants available, opportunities. Let's see if we can, can we save this chat? You know, that is something I don't know. Okay. That's why I'm, I'm, I, I've am I'm. been trying to leave up like a left leg and I'm just, if you want to, grab some of that info before we yeah let me see if i can do that real quick yeah i'm gonna let you try to get that or if caleb can grab it we grab did it have up oh, caleb's answering a couple of these questions so. yeah i'm gonna grab these uh, email addresses real fast bear with us for just a moment folks uh, i see someone has their hand raised if you can just drop your question into the q a please This other one from Jesse. Are there any other questions? Okay, here's one. Um, would a campground itself qualify for anything? Absolutely. Um, 
So Hilton Snowden is the new president of the Virginia Campground Association. I have worked with him for the past eight years. He used to be the tourism director for Gloucester. He's very familiar with our grants. I would recommend reaching out to him. Um, if you're a privately owned campground, uh, you would qualify as a lodging partner uh, to market your campground. Um, um, but if you are a state park, I don't know if you're like with a state park, then you're not eligible because you're already a state agency. Um, I think Caleb is answering Terry's question. Okay. And you got Jesse's email and you Jesse's got like email. the uh -huh. Hotel Lake Anna information. I did. I did. Okay, great. Um, thank I, you. I, I do want to stress, time. I think this will be a very competitive round. Um, <laughs> this is the first time we've done 12 webinars um, preceding a grant round. Wow. Um, we think we'll have over a total of over a thousand attendees. We normally get about 350 applications uh, for the, the three programs combined. We might get close to 500. Um, so really do your homework. Don't wait until March 13 and then log into the portal and think you can get it all done. Make yourself a plan to read all the documents, gather your information, and then apply. Good tip. <laughs> okay, does anyone else have anything? Let's see. Um, yes, a recording is going to, the recording and the slides will be sent out via email within a couple of days to all the attendees. So you are set. As long as you are here, you are set. <laughs> And at any time, you can go to our website and view recorded webinars once they're posted, which again was a, we post on a webinar, I mean, on our website within a week. So, um, what grants exist for a veteran owned small business or anything like that? Well, all our grants are open to veteran owned tourism oriented small businesses. Um, there is a, the state division of veteran services, I think there's a program. Maybe Caleb might might know. Is it called V3? Um, there are some programs through the state's Department of Veteran Affairs, but for us, um, being a veteran um, doesn't disqualify you or qualify you. It's whether or not you're a tourism-oriented small business. Let's see. Okay, anything else? We have. I, I'm showing four minutes, and we'll wrap up. But if we don't have anything, we'll go ahead and wrap up. <laughs> Do you have any last words of wisdom, Stacey? Um, well, we, we normally get about 50% of our applications on the very last day. Oh, and, boy. Those, and those are often the ones who don't get funding because they've rushed through. So again, I can't stress enough to, to take a look at those documents. You, you've got a week now before it opens and then give your time, yourself time to really think through who you want to target. Who is already coming to your business? Because they're probably telling their friends and family in, in Philadelphia. And maybe you do want to market to Cleveland. Or maybe you're in Roanoke um, and you want to start getting people to come in from D.C. for the weekend and do some shopping downtown and maybe do some mountain biking. Think about how you can connect with other businesses, maybe completely disparate businesses. You saw my, um, my picture up there of the brewery flight with cupcakes. This is a bakery and a brewery that are partnering together. Who would have thought? But it's a really fantastic partnership. It's gotten coverage in Southern Living. Um, so think about how you can really activate unique things for visitors to do. Fabulous. Okay. So, well, thank you, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and close us out. Um, and like I said, we'll send these out soon. So thank you all for attending. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Caleb. Um, everyone, like I said, we'll receive an email with a link to the recording and the presentation slides. If you would like to sign up for upcoming webinars or access recorded webinars, please visit virginiasbdc.org forward slash training. Um, SBD's resources are designed to be used in collaboration with your local SBDC advisors. You can sign up for a free and confidential session by emailing help at virginiasbdc.org or via our website. And we hope to see you at our next session. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Sheila. Bye. Take care.